What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And we are back from our hiatus. Welcome to Liquid Carnage, uh, the show that's been uh, off the air for three weeks. And since we've gone off the air, the whole world has come to a complete grinding halt. Yeah, I wish I could say that I was self, uh, self-isolating. self uh-huh. uh, But, um, you know, the, it, we're going to have to get back into the swing of things. I tell you what, man, we took, we took some time to figure out how we wanted to do our format going into season three, kind of give ourselves a little bit of a mental break. And in the middle of all this, the world literally went to shit. Everyone got told to go home and don't do anything. And if we want to save the world, we have to have a new show. We have to do our part. Well, I I feel like it's one of those things that uh, everyone's doing their part in their own way. And our way will be just continuing liquid carnage, baby. I I think so. I I think giving people about 30 minutes of solace every week, uh, giving them a chance to just kind of take their mind off the rest of the world and listen. That's what we're here for. We're here to have a good time, uh, give everybody a chance to kind of not think about anything else, Babylon, uh, trying to be experts on whatever the, the topic of the week well, is. Well, and, and I feel bad because I got called into a, an emergency release on the day that we were having the Liquid Carnage uh, happy hour, so I didn't even get a chance to go to that. Yeah, we had about seven people show up, which is pretty cool, man. It's fun to see everybody. Janelle from Montana, what's up, Janelle? She popped on, and it was cool to see her. Steve-O from down in Tempe, he and Elena. Uh, some friends up in Kingman, man. It was cool to see everybody. And just sometimes it's it's good to see faces. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been under the self-isolation for – this is the start of my fourth week. And other than to go to the grocery store, I haven't been out of the house for anything other than the grocery store. Yeah, I um, I go to work, and I come home, and then I go to the grocery store. I'll occasionally like go hike a trail or whatever else, but I, I try to stay out of places as much as possible and avoid people. Uh, it has definitely this has all definitely changed the way uh, I conduct myself on a daily basis. You know? Yeah, I think I mean my my work obviously hasn't really changed that much. I'm still doing the same kind of work, but I'm just doing it from this location, but, um, I, I would venture to say that, that socially my, my situation has changed a ton. Uh, you know, just, I don't see people anymore. Um, it, you know, except Noreen, I'm not really, I don't go out for, for breakfast, you know, for lunches or dinners or movies or anything. Yeah. You know, that's been the hardest adjustment for me is I, I like you, I'm sure you can agree. You're a very social person just like myself and, uh, being told every place you want to go and everything you want to do is now canceled until everybody literally goes to their room and stays there for a few weeks so we can make sure we don't spread the stuff. Yeah, and, you know, some of our listeners are in the healthcare industry. So, you know, I mean, I guess it goes without saying, but um, from someone who is lucky enough to be able to isolate um, – a major shout out to you guys because you don't get to self isolate. You're in the thick of things and it's, it's, it's rewarding as a person who respects that profession anyways, to see these people put their lives, their families' lives in jeopardy, but for the benefit of others who need their help. So it's, it's, it's really a good thing. Yeah. You know, it's being that I I work in a hospital and, and seeing, all the precautions we're taking and then we're asking people to take. And uh, it's been eye opening and it's been really cool to see the community rally around uh, the organization and try to do their part to help and try to make sure that uh, we get out of this thing with, uh, you know, as many healthy people as possible. And and we really uh, try to limit our, our, our losses as, as much as we can. And it's, you know, it's, it's a new world. And, and I, I think when we come out of this thing, I'm, I'm going to just go out and say, it. I don't think we're out of this thing before Memorial. Wow. Day. Really? I think that's being, I think that's being light about it. Cause a lot of people still don't take this seriously. I don't know. I don't know how it's down in Phoenix, but you know, the roads are still packed here in Kingman and, and the stores are still packed when you go. And even with all the precautions, the stores are taking, it's, you know, people still either think it's some kind of, you know, left wing conspiracy or, it's not as bad as it as they say it is, and they they don't want to believe all the hype, and it's scary, man. And I I like I akin this to something like uh, the the weeks and months right after nine eleven. Really? Um. You, okay. Yeah. I mean, and that's the only I can really that's the only way I can really compare it is when it first happened. You know, 
it seems like everything was empty. It was quieter for a little bit. People were scared because we, you didn't know what was going to happen next. But as we learned more, we, we kind of found a way to get back to some kind of normalcy. And, and we started working toward trying to find what our new normal would be then. And that was 19 years ago. <clears throat> and here we are trying to find what our new normal is now. And you're realizing the stuff that can prevent this is stuff that we probably should, should have been doing the entire time. Washing your hands, you know, trying not to be in overly crowded places. And, you know, the basic... The, the basics that they teach us in elementary school probably could have prevented a lot of this. Well, and, and, you know, I look at it from a different perspective that uh, th- this part to me has, has, because even with the nine 11, I never felt like I was in danger. I never, I was in shock obviously because of just the gruesome loss of life, but it, mm-hmm. I mean, I hate to say this, but New York was 3000 miles away. So I was looking at it as a yeah. story. This has affected every single person in the United States, every single person, whether it's losing your job, working from home, you know, uh, uh, you know, knowing someone who gets sick or knowing someone who doesn't, you know, everyone is impacted. And so the, the reaction to me is, is this is just so eye opening that how, how interrelated we are interconnected we are that everyone is affected by this everybody yeah and i think we come out of this thing with a a changed culture at least in america i think we're now starting to see who we should appreciate more all those teachers that that have always been underpaid the the people in the grocery stores that are still going to work every day for minimum wage plus a little bit more the ones that are putting their life on the line because they need the money and they're essentially what's keeping this world going we're finding out that you can work from home and you don't miss a beat. You don't have to be in the office to do your job. And I I think we're going to see the longer this goes on, the more people go back to that family dynamic and that family unit that happened back in, you know, the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. Cause if you can't go out, you have to spend time with each other. You might as well learn about each other, put away the phones, have a game night, put together a puzzle, make, make food together. I think, I think this has an opportunity. If there's going to be a good thing that comes out of this, it's that you have a chance to do to to get to know your family again. I, you know? I, I it was someone at work today. I was on a conference call, and one of the people said, "I don't know if I have enough closets to clean." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to clean out. And I thought that's true. I mean, we're doing things now that we never even thought we would be doing uh, before this. You know, like, oh, what do you do on a yeah, Saturday? The- hmm, why don't we clean out all of our closets? Why don't we, you know? do something that's not, uh, you know, service oriented. I found myself one of the biggest changes or impacts to me was I didn't realize how much I enjoy going to a restaurant, having a glass of wine or having a good meal just to have a good meal. Like that was part of my Mm -hmm. idea of having a good time and having fun. I didn't realize how much of it took up my life until this happened. Oh yeah, me too. I realized that uh, my hobbies include being social out in places that are no longer open. And that's been a hard adjustment for me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that's been a hard adjustment for me to not go out and do those things, not go out and see the people I'm used to seeing and moving those happy hours and what have you to zoom. So, you know, we yeah. talk about what has impacted us. Have you been surprised by anything that has not been that bad of an adjustment <clears throat> for you? Um, you know, uh, the, the thing that's, I guess, been the best for me is I've saved money, obviously, because the bars are closed and whatever else. But uh, now that I've got like a, some, my supply of food, I, you know, I, I've been every week when I go to the grocery store, I try to buy a little bit extra just in case because you don't know how things are going to go and just put a little way in the freezer, my normal things. Uh, how much money I've saved, just I haven't spent extra stuff, you know, now that I'm set, uh, how many movies I've been put off putting off to watching or books i've been putting off reading i've had a chance to actually get to do and read or watch and read you know things like that uh like you say i've cleaned my house uh i i've hiked more trails in the area over the last three weeks than i've probably done in the last five years just so i can get out of the house okay you know what about Um, you i'm surprised (coughs) i i don't know if i'm surprised so I'm, i'm surprised of one of the two things either 
um, how much time sports took up of my life or how much mm-hmm. I don't miss sports. Not you don't at miss all. Sports. Like we haven't had sports now, what, month and a half? There's been no sports, no sports. Three weeks. There hasn't been football, yeah. basketball, yeah, about three weeks, baseball, yeah. nothing. I haven't missed it. I, I thought I was going to struggle not having my sports fix because I listen to sports radio in the morning and I, you know, watch basketball games and baseball games and I watch football games. Um, and I thought I would have a tough time adjusting with not having that. And it has been an easier transition than I could have possibly imagined. See, I'm getting used to the fact that it's not there anymore, but I do. Miss oh, okay. It. Yeah. I, I, and, like I, I, I you know, I'm like you. I find that I've been reading a lot more. Like I've already finished three books since the COVID isolation started. Um, yeah, you know, I, you I know, read it's... more. Um, I, I don't. I don't sit in front of the TV as much um, because you know I I use the time to do other things um, that are just as important, like clean the house or you know cook a meal or you know because we don't have any food. So I've been cooking a lot more. Uh, you know, saving money. Um, yeah. But I, I've noticed that I, I don't the, the sports part. I thought would be really devastating to me, and maybe to the, even the United States. That oh my gosh, no sports, no sports. But I haven't uh, haven't felt like I missed anything. And then it makes me wonder well, how I, much I think, time I was putting into that every day, putting into sports and watching and reading sports stories. And I, I think you're probably a lot like me, where you're we're both casual basketball and baseball fans, and even hockey to an extent. To where if we don't watch it, it's not it's not the end of the world. And this this is the season now. We'd, we'd be in the playoffs or just starting the playoffs for hockey and for basketball and and baseball just getting started. So we would be watching that or having that on in the background in the evening just for something to do. We're both much bigger football fans. I think that's easy to say. Yeah, oh, big time. Yeah. Had if this, this was ha- happening in October, this happen- who knows what we'd be talking about? Yeah, exactly. You know, if if we don't get football this year. I think you'll see the world, you'll see America finally say, well, fuck. This has been going on by that, by that point by August is what, four months from now? If we're still in this in four months, they need to get a fucking clue and, and sit their asses down. Because if we don't have football, uh, you know, American sports fans just might just start jumping off the bridges. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 um, I, I guess it's possible. I mean, you know, but, but I guess it also puts into perspective some of the things you talked about earlier where, you know, we're not focusing on things that are outside of our family. We're focusing on our families or we're, we're focusing on yeah. playing games or talking or doing things that we haven't really done for a long time, you know? So, yeah. you know, th- you, you read these stories on the internet about, you know, that they're, they're predicting that there's going to be a higher rate of divorce because people are having, actually having to spend time with each other. And, you know, I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's the opposite. I think you're going to find that you have more in common with your spouses and your families now that you've put away all your distractions for the most part. Oh, see, and I was thinking the opposite. I was thinking the distractions are what keep us from noticing. I don't really like this person. No, <laughs> well, there's that too. I mean, that's how some people feel. I mean, what do I know? I live alone with three dogs and all this. So, you know, if, if I see if I see someone walking down my street, I want to open the garage door or not and just talk to him from at least six feet away. Just so I have someone. Well, to talk you know what that that leads up a good point because you had made this comment to me just in in texting that um, that you know it, being single during this is a whole different experience than being with someone. How would you define the experience as being single? Like, what is that like for someone who doesn't you know who's by themselves? It's hard. Um, weekdays aren't that bad since I still have a routine since I'm still going to the office. I'm still doing that. I, I obviously I can't go to a gym, so I'm trying to figure out how to work out from home. Um, I've moved a giant hammock into my living room. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, it's, okay. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's hard to explain Now we, we all cope for with different things. Like, you know, uh, our EP Tom is actually up here for the duration of this. He took a job in Denver and was relocating to Denver uh, when all this got uh, all this blew up. So he's been living here. I think this is week two, week three for him being here in Kingman. And he's here until he's allowed to go up to, to Colorado. So I'm not sure that that might be mid May at oh this point. Oh my gosh. So, you know, he's at least here. So he and I have can go out and do things or whatever else, but 
you still have to watch who you're around or what you're doing because are you know you even if you're not showing signs you can still be asymptomatic an asymptomatic carrier so i mean that's that's the hard part for me it's it's being paranoid a little to an extent about who i'm around because you don't know where those other people have been and and what you know how often should i leave the house do i really need to leave the house and i find myself driving a whole lot more aimlessly around town just to be wow out. really okay okay yeah, I, yeah. I noticed that like like I with know. noreen and i um we we do a lot more cooking together or playing games and and we yeah. have someone to do that with that makes a big difference versus not having that yeah. and saying okay the walls are starting to talk to me what do i need to do yeah you know it's funny because like jp and i go through that a lot too because our, our buddy jp is a teacher and now school's basically done for the year for him and they're doing everything via zoom or sending home packets so there's a lot of hurrying up and waiting for him and he lives alone too so it's we, we both have that same well shit yeah what now you know and you know that's i think the weekends are kind of kind of a solace for both of us to where we can we can go to a neutral place that's in the wide open and like bring some beers or whatever else and, and, and sit at a distance just to be out of the house and just to see other people and just catch up and bullshit. So how long do you think, I mean, you know, one of the big things that I think about all the time is the economy, right? Um, and how long do you mm-hmm. think it's going to take for the economy to get back to what we're used to seeing? Oh, I, I think it might be a year yes. or two. I, I think the longer this goes on, the more it's going to drop and drag. We're going to see something as bad as the the bubble from 2008. I think it's going to just tank really bad and it's going to, it's going to be a while before everything starts to climb back up. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, when you try to visualize the, what, what changes we're looking at, um, you know, sometimes I wonder with, with the less traffic, what has that done to our local environment? Um, you know, with less traffic, yeah. you have less emissions if you have less emissions, are, are I mean, is it is it possible that it's that quickly noticeable to our environment, like our local environment, well, that the reduction in cars out and and you know is making a difference on the environment? I don't know, but I would be interested to see what kind of scientific evidence, like what was going on before the COVID and what's been going on for this year, to see if there's been any change well, environmentally. Yeah. I, I've read some articles where they said like the hole in the ozone layer is starting to actually heal itself a little bit. They've they've said the dolphins are returning to the canals of Venice. Uh, the canals of Venice are clearer for the first time in a couple hundred years. Really? I mean, you just yeah, from, just from the lack of uh, of interaction right. of people, the world is slowly fixing itself. Well, and I know? would say it's actually fixing itself pretty damn quickly. If after only three or four weeks, yeah, the waters are clearing up and. Well, Italy, Italy's been shut down since one mid yeah, February, early February. Yeah, I mean, so Italy's had clearly had some more chance to, you know, shut up and sit down. And China, who's probably one of the biggest emissions rascals, I guess is the best way to put it, has it was basically shut down from the, our New Year until well this week. Wow. Yeah. I mean, they're just now starting to come back out. Oh, wow. Yeah, you know, it's so much has changed. It, it's been a wild first quarter of 2020, and it really has. And uh, I, I keep thinking the way this year has started that we have nowhere to go but up because we just hit rock bottom. And it seems like we just bounce off a rock and fall another, you know, 30 feet every time we hit a new month. So I cannot wait to see what kind of shit show April brings okay, us. Okay, so I, I'm going to pose this question. What's the one thing that okay. even after COVID comes back, you're going to give up? And what's the one thing that as soon as COVID is over, you're getting right back into it? Oh, I guarantee you, once I can go back out again, I'll, I probably won't be home for a month. Just, um, I didn't realize like how social I am with people and, and how much just like seeing people, not like partying, but just making those connections, doing the things that, you know, I like to do, trying to get back into the swing of just being a part of a community. Because even though you're a part of the community through Zoom and through taking donations at work or through other other avenues, being around the people that 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 you want to be around and, and being able to laugh and, and see them in person versus over screen, I think does so much more for you uh, on a morale level yeah. 
but um, I, I think what I've what I've learned, I, it, like you said, I, I I'm used to no sports now, so I don't. As much as I miss it, I, I probably won't be so quick just to run and turn it back on. I'll probably be leery of going to bigger cities for a while because that's just how it is. You know, I, I like wide open spaces, and until this thing's completely squashed, I'm not going to put myself in any more unneeded risk. Yeah. Um, the what one thing that I, I I will not uh, I will not uh, go back to even if I wanted to was um, I, I I'm kind of like with you I think I definitely will uh, not be going back to watching a bunch of TV and going you know watching movies all the time and watching I, I'm I, I I have been pleasantly surprised how much I don't want to consume so much of my time watching tv and movies and so i definitely will go back to doing you know chores or you know doing being more productive um one thing that i will definitely um go back to is uh enjoying restaurants again um and really enjoying the restaurants that i really enjoy i mean you know there you get to some of the like in phoenix is a little bit easier but you get to a restaurant where i just like the people there i like the atmosphere there why do I, you know, try to find other places when I just like, like this local hangout? So I'll, that'll be the first thing. Once we get back to doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I mean, that that'll be done for sure. Um, but, but yeah, in terms of, in terms of, you know, I'm learning that, you know, we don't have a lot of time in this world and let's take the, make the most of it. Um, and for me yeah. lately watching TV and watching movies has not been a priority to me at all. Yeah, you know, th- there are some movies like I've wanted to watch. Like, all right, now I've got the time to sit and do it, I will. And and the weather's still kind of shitty. Like, we've, we've had the really nice days. Because that's, that's how the spring goes for us. There's there's really nice days, and the wind blows for four days, and rain comes in, and then it's, you know, nice again. So when it's been windy and, and rainy and shitty, those are the days I take to read and and be inside and, you know, watch the movies I've been putting off or catch up on my DVR. But those nice days or those early mornings are, are, are when I make the most of being outside and doing things I wouldn't do otherwise. You know, um, I have now I wake up between four 30 and five, regardless of the yeah, day, me too. just the way it is. So yeah. it's, it's, this past Saturday, for instance, I was up, I walked five miles to the grocery store by six, clean my house by seven 30 and by nine, I was bored, man. I had <laughs> nothing else to do. And like it was nice out, so like I wouldn't have hung out outside with the garage door open, you know. But if you can't be around people, it, it's hard to enjoy, you know, just being by yourself out there. And and I will say the thing that got me through the weekend is I accidentally got drunk drinking a bottle of rum uh, on on Saturday. <laughs> accidentally, <afternoon. laughs> you, you didn't realize you don't realize how much you you, you had until you yeah. realize the bottle's gone. And it wasn't like I was pounding. It was like, oh, I'll have a drink here and a drink there. And then, you know, people call you, talk on the phone, or you're watching something. And I ended up watching uh, WrestleMania oh. over the weekend. And it was interesting to see how they did it because that's normally a, a show, a pay-per-view, where it's yeah. their biggest show of the year. And they do it in front of 75,000, 80,000 fans. And they did this in an empty warehouse, basically. And the these and I, I it gave me a whole new respect for for that profession and what and what those athletes do because you realize how much they have to feed off of the energy of the crowd and how that keeps their adrenaline going through all these crazy matches and to see them perform in an empty room and try to keep that energy and you can hear them talk you can hear them talk shit to each other it's like they stepped up the stuff you wouldn't normally hear with all those screaming fans to give you a different experience. And it, it was, it was truly cool to see just, just how they did it and how it was handled. And I, I have to give them a lot of, a lot of credit for that. Cause uh, to do something that you would normally do with screaming fans and do it on such an intimate level and, and be able to pull it off. I think, I think says a lot about wow, the performers. So, you know, they're talking about one of the big, yeah. um, one of the big things that might come from this whole thing going forward is the, uh, the movement of both the workforce and the schools to more of an online type of um, atmosphere where, you know, more stay at home workers, oh. more kids going to school online and doing, you know, their schooling online. Um, do you have any thoughts on what that would look like or whether that's a good thing or a bad thing? 
I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I, I think once companies realize that they can function like this and keep productivity up and they don't have to spend as much money on real estate to house their workers, I, I think you're going to see that the, the companies are going to push it more. There might be some, some heartburn at the beginning as they figure out you know, how, to, how to monitor productivity. But I, I think you'll see more of that. I think realistically – the, the the kids that that want to be homeschooled like that, I you might see an uptick in that. But there's such a socialization for kids at that age, those those ages. It's hard to it's hard to it's hard to quantify long term internet schooling would do versus uh, being with your peers as far as you know socialization goes. You know. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of torn on it because I, I do agree that I mean I I've worked from home now for almost starting my fourth week. I think I, I'm more productive now than I was when I was in the office because I don't have any interruptions. I work er- earlier. I work longer. I don't take lunch sometimes. I mean, the, you know, so for me, I do feel that you're right. The efficiencies that these companies are going to be able to recognize might be worth moving to an, um, you know, workforce from home. Um, but I think about like how, um, uh, these companies that manage uh, buildings. I mean, if you lose renters, yeah. that's a huge hit to that part of the economy, right? Yeah. Or, you know, like school yeah. districts, I, I was shocked how many of the low income students get their f- food from the schools. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean that's... like in Phoenix, um, there's a lot of the, the lower income families that are going to the school in their cars, driving up, and the schools are loading basically breakfast and lunch for the kids because the kids don't have the food to eat at home. Yeah, and there's a lot. I think that's that's statewide. That's probably nationwide. Um, I know we have that program here going still, too. We've got certain, you know, like the club for youth, which we, formerly the Boys and Girls Club is still open. Because kids still need a place to go. Parents still have to have their kids watched trying to go to work because they're central. And, you know, it, that's such an important part to this uh, to, to this piece of making this go away. And you see you see how the schools do step up and, and do care for kids that would otherwise fall through the cracks. Yeah, well, and and I just I just I guess I'm just naive. I didn't realize how many kids. You know, when when you don't live in that kind of situation, it, it's foreign to you, right? I mean, you don't you don't take yeah. it in that there are families out there that just don't have the resources. You know, it's either put a roof over your head or put food on the table. You know, and and yeah. a lot of times one, one other, yeah. the, the the kids know or the parents know that at least my kids are going to get something to eat at school. You know, at least they'll get something yeah. to eat, and then to take that away because of this is it's a shock, like. You know, you don't you don't think about all these little ramifications of how this is affect everybody. Um, I guess one final question I would ask uh, you as we wrap this up is what do you think will be the biggest takeaway from like a government perspective about how to move forward in a new world? Um, I don't know if we have the proper people in place in our government right now to answer that question. I, I I truly believe the ball has been dropped in a lot of ways uh, with this pandemic and no responsibility is being taken, at least on the level that it should. So I, I think if anything changes, it won't be until the next uh, regime takes over, whenever that might be. Well, and, and this is kind of weird, but the way I, the way I've been looking at is um, how during this time, how much more of the decisions are being made at a state level by the 50 governors versus the central government making the decisions. So my thought was that what this will do is it will begin to put into question what role does the central government or the federal government should they play? Because most of these governors were doing things on their own for this treatment of this COVID long before the federal government committed to uh, a plan or a solution. And I find it interesting that 
like the federal government would make a statement, hey, we're going to get through this. And then the stock market would crash. And then the federal government would make some other statement. And local governors were saying, we're doing this this way. We're not listening to what you are saying. We're going to do it our way. And I'm, 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 I'll be interested to see how the transition of power starts to leave the federal government and run by the states individually. Well, I, I, I think in this case, especially, um, people are realizing that our current regime uh, has bungled this just by not admitting that this was an issue earlier than it, or, um, earlier on, by constantly pawning off blame, not taking responsibility, and trying to hurt those states that have spoken up against them, saying, or oh, refusing to give them the help as fast as they, they could. Well, and, and but I also think that, I mean, I, I, I do give a little bit of a pass because, like you've said in the earlier, we've never experienced this before. We've never experienced this. So for to have to come up with the perfect response to it, it, it it's it's kind of hard. Now, I'm not giving it a complete pass. I, 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 I would I would I would agree on on some levels. But the other level, I have to say, no, that doesn't fly. Is he's in 2018? They let go of our of our national pandemic team. They fired him. The team that was in place to handle situations like this. They never got replaced. Then the government denied that even ha- that was even a thing. But we have it on record. It's been aired many times of them talking about this this pandemic team two years ago and why they were let go, and they never and they never explained why they never replaced them. Then to say why we have a national shortage on supplies to blame it on the previous regime that's been out of office for now four years uh, falls short to say that the testing is poor because of the previous regime again, four years ago falls short. There is no testing for this four years ago because this didn't exist four years ago. And you can't be, if in three years, I'll just, I'll put it to you in a sports reference and maybe this might drive it home for some people in three years, if Mike McCarthy, the new head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, is blaming Jason Garrett for the reason he can't win in his team, for the reason he can't win any playoff games in Dallas, Mike McCarthy's not a good coach because he's had three years to put his team together to, to be the way to be competitive the way he wants them to be. You can't blame the old coach three years later for modern problems that weren't here four years ago or three years ago. Yeah. So that's the biggest problem I have. Yeah. It's you don't get a pass for it because you keep blaming somebody that's been gone for three to four years and, and, and left you with the cabinet stocked, at least at the time for what they were. And if you knew this was coming, you did nothing about it. There's no one to blame but yourself, but you're not he's not going to do that. <clears throat> well, I guess the one thing that we can maybe end the show on is that it's as, as important now as it maybe ever been to remember that we're not alone, that all of us are need each other in one form or another, whether it's helping out as a nurse or a doctor in the hospital or going to a restaurant just to keep them afloat and ordering a meal that you may not need or want to recording a podcast and sending it out to listeners to give them something to break up the stressfuls, um, the stresses of the day. So we all do our part, my friend. So we do. We do. And tell us, what are you doing for your part? How are you helping your community? And also tell us, are there some topics you want us to talk about with season three on the horizon? Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at liquid carnage. And if you want to wish our EP Tom a happy 41st birthday, because this is his birthday week, hit him up at liquid underscore EP on Twitter and Instagram. I think it's important for me to point this out right now that even with the hiatus, uh, this will be the start of year four. Is this season four or We're season three? We're ending season three. We're starting season four. That's my damn. That was a good. That was a good uh, plug too, and I fucked it yeah, up. Uh, that uh, yeah, the executive producer, even in his current state of limbo for his job, is not going to be happy with your your promo. Oh no, believe me. But I'm not. Uh, he, for those that don't know, the EP is my brother, and uh, for years in his mind, he was chose he was deemed the successful one of the family but i am not the one in my 40s unemployed living in our parents back room so happy birthday big brother 
with that being said, Jason, take us off. Thanks, everyone, for listening. It's good to, to talk to you again. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, that was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>